What does the Bible say about church attendance? Are you curious about what the Bible says about church attendance? Journey with us as we explore this topic, revealing the spiritual, communal, and personal significance of this practice from a biblical perspective. Gathering together for worship, encouragement, and learning is a cherished tradition for Christians worldwide. Many perceive it as an essential aspect of their faith, while others see it as more flexible. So, what does the Bible say about church attendance? Are there clear instructions encouraging believers to congregate regularly, or is it a matter of personal conviction? Let's embark on a journey to explore this compelling subject. What does the Bible say about church attendance interpreting Hebrews 10:25? Attending church, one biblical verse that is frequently cited in discussions about church attendance is Hebrews 10:25. Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. For many believers, this scripture is a clear directive to assemble regularly for worship and mutual encouragement. Reasons and verses where the Bible encourages attendance in community, King James, James Bible, Reason Bible Verse Explanation Communal Worship Hebrews 10:25. not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This verse encourages believers to consistently attend communal gatherings. It speaks against the habit of missing meetings, highlighting the importance of mutual encouragement. Unity Psalm 133:1. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. This psalm elucidates the beauty and goodness that emanates from unity within a community of believers. Regular attendance at community gatherings fosters such unity. Encouragement and love 1 Thessalonians 5:11. Therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. In attending community gatherings, members get opportunities to encourage and build each other up, as commanded in this verse. Instruction and learning Colossians 3:16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. The community gathering is a place for collective learning and instruction. It provides the opportunity to share wisdom and knowledge. Service to others Galatians 5:13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, rather, serve one another humbly in love. The Bible encourages believers to serve one another humbly in love. Being active in the community is one of the ways to live out this service. Bearing each other's burdens Galatians 6:2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Active participation in community life provides an avenue for believers to share and carry each other's burdens, fulfilling the law of Christ. Mutual edification Romans 14 19. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. The communal gathering is a place for believers to edify each other. Regular attendance provides opportunities for peacemaking and mutual upbuilding. Conflict resolution Matthew 18 20. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Gathering as a community presents the opportunity to resolve conflicts and misunderstandings in the presence of God. Sharing material possessions Acts 2 44-45 All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. In the early church, communal gatherings provided an avenue for believers to share their possessions and meet the needs of others. This act of generosity is still relevant today. The early Christian community, Gospel, the Bible provides glimpses into the routines of the early Christian community. Acts 2:42 to 47 documents the believers' devotion to the apostles' teachings, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. This passage suggests that communal worship and learning were central to their faith life. Biblical account Bible verse explanation The Upper Room Acts 1 13-14 When they had entered the city, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, that is, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer, along with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. After Jesus' ascension, the disciples, some women, Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers met in the upper room in Jerusalem where they prayed together and devoted themselves to God. Pentecost Acts 2 1-4 When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. During the day of Pentecost, believers were gathered in one place. This event marked the birth of the church as the Holy Spirit came upon them, enabling them to speak in other languages. Father, Grandfather, Minister, Missionary, Deacon, Elder, Author, Welcome to our family, View all posts, 